السلام عليكم it's Vivian Shwaikani I'll be explaining you uh, chapter 8 functional groups part 2 so let's start first of all with the single objective we have to cover in this chapter which is to determine the molecular formulas of organic compounds let's start by a recall from the previous video here we noticed that we saw many organic compounds many families of organic compounds among which we list alkene alkenes alkynes alcohol having the following general formulas and having the hydroxyl group as functional group we have ether having this functional group we have aldehydes and ketones and carboxylic acid having the following general formulas and each one of them having this functional group now also regarding the recall you have to pay attention that isomers as you can see we have three types of isomers of structural isomers how to proceed in order to determine the type of isomers between two or three isomers we said that first of all we have to check their functional group if they have different functional groups it means automatically they will be functional isomers if they have the same functional group we have to look at their skeleton it means at their carbon chain if they have different skeleton automatically they will be skeletal isomers and the last case if they have the same skeleton they will be positional isomers and always remember the following hint fsp it means this is the order you have to follow in order to identify the type of isomerism functional skeletal and at last positional now Our objective in this lesson is to determine the molecular formula of an organic compound. How to explain this objective via applications? So we have to consider two applications in our video. It's a kind of exercise taken last year in grade uh, 11 that we have to repeat and to review. And this is how to proceed in order to determine the molecular formula of an organic compound. In the first case, if the organic family of the organic compound is unknown, let's consider this application. We said here the complete combustion of 5 mg of an organic compound A containing only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so we know that the element contained in, in A, produces 12 mg of carbon dioxide and 6 mg of water vapor. We have three instructions in this. This is given definitely three instructions. The first one is to determine the empirical formula. We have to explain after a while what is the empirical formula. We have to determine the molecular formula, which is our objective in this lesson, knowing that its molar mass m is given. And the third instruction is to write the isomers of A. Let's start by the first question. Here, the given is written again because the numerical values in it, it they will be used here. Let's suppose that A has a formula of CxHyOz. Okay, because as we said, comp compound A contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The first given here to be used is the following. We know that the combustion of A produces CO2. Where does this, this CO2 comes from? Actually, compound A contains C. The carbon in A reacts with oxygen in air, producing CO2. So the CO2 produces here is or comes from the carbon contained in A. So as much as we obtain CO2, we know how much carbon this compound A contains. How? In the following way. According to the stoichiometry of this equation or of this reaction, we know that the number of carbon, the number of mole of carbon over one, because the stoichiometric coefficient here is one, is equal to the number of CO2 formed over one. The number of mole is what? It can be replaced by the following. The mass of carbon over the molar mass of carbon and the same for CO2 mass of CO2 over molar mass of CO2. Now, what is the mass of carbon? It is unknown. It's to be determined. What is the molar mass of carbon? It is here 12. That of CO2, it is given because upon the complete combustion of compound A, we obtained 12 milligram of carbon dioxide. So this is the mass of carbon dioxide that is written here. The molar mass of CO2 is to be calculated. It is a 12 for one carbon plus 16 times 2 for the two high oxygen, so it is 44. So as you can see here, I have just one unknown, that is the mass of carbon. So the mass of carbon will be, you know, we will do the calculation here. It is 3.27 milligram because the mass here was given in milligram. Now let's find the percentage by mass of carbon. 
What is a percentage by mass of carbon? Simply, it is the mass of carbon over the total mass. Now, the total mass is simply the mass of the whole compound A because this is the total mass. Regarding the percentage, there is always an example we give that if you have to calculate, for example, in your class, the percentage of, suc of success in a chemistry quiz, let's say, how to proceed in it, we say the percentage of success is equal to the number of the student who succeeded in this exam over the total number of students in a class times 100. In the same way, this is a typical percentage formula to be applied, but it's a formula concerning the mass of carbon. So percentage by mass of carbon, I repeat, it is the mass of carbon over the total mass, that is the mass of compound A, times 100. All this is given. The mass of carbon is determined here in milligram. The mass of A is given here because we burned how much? 5 milligram of compound A. So here no need to convert to gram because here is in milligram and here is in milligram. So we don't need to convert. And this is the percentage by mass of carbon in compound A. This is the first step. Don't forget that we are determining the empirical formula of A. This is the first step, the determination of the percentage by mass of carbon. The given is written again. Now let's determine the percentage by mass of hydrogen. In the same way, here we said that water vapor is obtained. How is the, this water vapor is obtained? Actually, it is the result of the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen. This hydrogen comes from compound A that contains here hydrogen. Now, according to stoichiometry of this reaction, definitely we can write N of hydrogen over 1 is equal to the number of mole of H2O over 1. Again, let's replace the number of mole by the mass of H2 over the molar mass of H2 and the same for H2O. What is our unknown? It is the mass of H2. So the mass of H2 will be equal mass of H2O. Where is mass, mass of H2O? It is here, 6 milligram, and we will not convert here times the molar mass of H2, that of H is 1, so here it would be 2, so it is 2 times 6, over the molar mass of H2O, that is 18. Okay, so it is 18. Now we have the mass of H2, that is 0 0.66 milligram. Let's do the percentage by mass of hydrogen. Here there is a thing that you have to pay attention to. First of all, regarding the percentage by mass of hydrogen, it is the mass of hydrogen, simply application of the percentage formula over the total mass, that is the mass of compound A that is given here as 5 milligram. Now, the student might be confused how you are using here percentage by mass of hydrogen, and here you wrote mass of hydrogen, and here mass of H2. Actually, it is the same regarding mass. I repeat, regarding mass, whether the mass of H2 or the mass of H. It means, imagine here H2, the H2 here, I'm calculating its mass, it is found in the form of H and not H2. It doesn't make any difference regarding mass, okay? Because whether they are arranged in the form of H2 or found freely in the form of H, it is the same regarding mass, I repeat. So the mass of H2 here, it is the mass of H in compound A, okay? So we are, and here is a note to be considered in all exercises of this type. We are considering here the whole mass of hydrogen, the whole mass, regardless its formula. So the mass of H is equal to the mass of H2 found here. Now the percentage by mass, as I can see, the mass of hydrogen that is here times 100 over 5, that is the mass of compound A, that is the total mass, and this is how the mass, the percentage by mass of hydrogen is determined. Now, we said that A contains also oxygen. How to determine the percentage by oxygen? Simply by a subtraction, because the percentage of oxygen equal the 100, it means the whole, minus the percentage of carbon plus that of hydrogen. So, uh, the percentage of oxygen, it is equal to 21.4 percentage. Again, our question is to determine the empirical formula of A. So we used this given to determine the percentage by mass of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, how to use this in order to determine the empirical formula of A in the following way. We know that A is in the form Cx, Hy, Oz. Our concern is to determine now X, Y, and Z. How we determine them? According to what do we call the law of definite proportions. This law said the following. X, it means this subscript, 
x times the molar mass of carbon divided by the percentage of carbon is equal y that is the subscript the subscript here of hydrogen times the molar mass of hydrogen divided by the percentage of hydrogen and the same for oxygen z here times the molar mass of oxygen over percentage of oxygen this one is called the law of definite proportions it is equal also to the molar mass of the compound a over 100 but this is to be seen in the next application so as i said you are responsible of this formula taken last year which is called the law of definite proportions what do we have to do now we have to replace the known values by their values it means x it is unknown it's kept here the molar mass of carbon is 12 because it's given and the percentage by mass of carbon is given in the previous exercise same for hydrogen y times one because the molar mass of hydrogen is one divided by the percentage found in the previous slide z it is unknown molar mass of oxygen is 16 divided by the percentage of oxygen found in the previous slide as you can see here i have three unknown so unknown sorry so i can't find them what do we have to do we have to do the following we have to take them two by two usually we consider we calculate x and y as a function of z how just let's consider 12x over this value that is equal to this one and let's find x in terms of z how in that way here as i said 12x over 65.4 i copied it's equal to 16z over 21.4 x that is here will be equal this value that is 16 times this value divided by 21.4 times 12 that will be here as a function of z so we found we find that we found that x is equal 4.07 z we do an approximation here or a rounding and x is found to be almost 4 z always here we have to have uh, natural numbers okay now what do we have to consider we have to take now this y and that is equal to this it means we have to consider this part of the equation we will write it 1y over 13.2 that is equal to 16z over 21.4 and then the y will be here what the y by a simple calculation will be equal to this as a function of z so y will be equal 9.8 of z again by a rounding we will find that y is almost equal to 10z so what is the empirical formula of a a is has the form cx hy o z x is what now it is for z so the empirical formula for z equal one will be four because for z z is considered to be one h it is 10 because z is considered to be one and one so now what does the empirical formula means it means the smallest proportions of the elements one with respect to the other it means a can be c4 h 10 o or it can be c8 h 20 o2 or it can be c4 times 3 12 uh, 13 and the 3 so as i said the empirical formula shows the least proportions of the elements with respect to the other now determine the molecular formula of a we cannot determine the molecular formula unless we have what the molar mass of a once we have the molar mass and once we have the um, its empirical formula it would be easy this is the empirical formula as i said the empirical formula it means the least proportions for the elements one with respect to the other what is the molar mass of this formula it is 4 times 12 here plus 10 times 1 because the molar mass of hydrogen is 1 plus 16 divided by n this n it means how much we have to multiply these in order to get the molecular formula since the molar mass is 74 so 74 will be equal 74 n and n in this case is equal to 1 so the molecular formula of a it is the same as its empirical formula but at the as i said this is not the case here we found n equal one sometimes n can be equal to two to three etc in our case this is the molecular formula of a now we still have the third part the third part is to write the isomers of a here i will ask you to do a pause and to write the isomers they are of the following they are the following and our application ends but 
I gave you a given application to practice the kind of isomers. Look here. Don't remember, uh, pardon, don't forget the hint FSP. If I ask you about those, uh, those uh, isomers, what about A and B, for example? Which type of isomers are they? As you can see, I will explain it for A and B, and I will just expose the seconds. It will be a kind of application for you. A and B. First of all, according to F, we have to look at the functional group. They have the same functional group hydroxyl, so definitely they are not functional isomers. Now, the second step is to look at their skeleton. Look at their carbon chain. It's four linear carbon chain, and here four carbon that makes the same chain. So they have the same carbon chain, so they are not skeletal. Uh, isomers, the single chance, so it's to be what positional isomers do the same regarding A and E. So pause the video and just do it for A and E. After pausing the video and after passing by these three uh, steps, you will find that A and E are skeletal isomers. What about A and E? Uh, here it's repeated, sorry, A and E. What about A and C? Look at A and C. Here they have, do they have the same functional group? No, this is an alcohol and this is an ether. So automatically they are functional isomers. As I said, do for A and D, pause the video and find it. Do it for B and C to find that they are functional for E and D. And finally for C and G. Now, again, our objective is to determine, to determine the molecular formula. Let's consider another application, which is application two, where the organic family of the compound is known. This is the given. Determine the molecular formula of a saturated non-cyclic monoalcohol A if the percentage of oxygen is the following. Why we give you usually this sentence in exercises? Because as I said in part one, almost, not almost, in all cases this year, we will deal with organic compound having saturated non-cyclic compounds, regardless of their group. It means you can use the general formula that is in terms of N in this year. So the solution, as I said, the general formula of a saturated non-cyclic monoalcohol is given as that because it is memorized in the previous video. So <laughs> the molar mass <coughs> of CnH2n plus 2O is the following. 12N for carbon, 2N plus 2 times 1 for hydrogen, because the molar mass of hydrogen is 1, plus 16, so it is equal 14 plus 18, okay? According to the law of definite proportions. Again, what do we have to see previously? We wrote mass of carbon over percentage by carbon, so the mass of carbon would be replaced by <coughs> the number of mole of carbon, the same for the hydrogen, <coughs> sorry, 2n plus 2 times molar mass of hydrogen and that of oxygen. What did I add here? The molar mass of A over 100 because I said that the law of definite proportions is the following. Now, what do we have to do simply? To substitute the molar mass of the compound in terms of N. Because we know, why did we consider just that of oxygen? Because this is the given, that of oxygen, 16 times 1 over 26.67, this is the molar mass of the compound, so all what we have to do is to get N. N is equal to 3. Then the general formula, the molecular formula of the saturated uh, monocyclic alcohol A will be C3H8O. So this is what we have to do. I will ask you to review the solution of the application and to redo it again. And you have to solve these exercises, definitely not all, all together. They will be given in your uh, diary by your teacher. Thank you. See you in next video.